Hey friends, it's Annie with eBay School, and today you're in for a doozy, or at least part one of a doozy. <laughs> this is a very requested topic, which is how to do bulk listing by uploading CSV files to eBay. It's a little bit complicated, though not unmanageable, so I'm going to break it down into lots and lots of granular parts. I'll also give you a pointer of where to go if you just don't have the time or patience to deal with that. So this video will just be about doing some crucial preparation before you start bulk listing with a CSV file and some explanation and some philosophy and who knows. And before I forget, CSV just stands for comma separated value. And it's basically what a spreadsheet is built out of. Each um, cell in a spreadsheet, if you transform it into just pure code, is a thing, a comma, a thing, a comma, etc. And then there's a new row, and it has a different marker, but it doesn't matter. Um, it's basically just a name for a very generic form of spreadsheet, comma, separated values. And I'll talk about what software you can use and all of that later. Uh, you don't need to know any coding or anything like that to do this, though if you have done coding, it will help you <laughs> with troubleshooting, but not necessary. So let's start with part one. First thing I wanted to talk about is why you'd want to do this, and that's because it is extremely time-saving and it's a great efficiency if you have many of a single type of item or similar items and you can just cruise through and make listings in Excel or whatever your spreadsheet program is. It's so much faster than doing each one individually on eBay or in another tool with a a GUI or a, you know, like a thing where you fill out little forms online and then wait for them to upload and wait for the images to upload. In this case, you're just uploading one file and you're also uploading your images, but it's in a much more efficient way. Um, it's also sort of a gateway to understanding how to, to mechanize even more of eBay. I'm not going to go into any of that, but once you get this basic concept of how eBay works with CSV files, you can um, generate reports and you can modify your listings and you can do all kinds of automation um, through this basic methodology. Also, it's just nerdy and fun and um, satisfying to crank out a, a ton of listings this way. And I should also say that for my tutorial here, and as an example that I hope um, will be something you can relate to somewhat, I'm going to be listing postcards in bulk, vintage postcards. Now, I know not everyone sells those, but hopefully you can find something that you do sell that is similar. This isn't going to be really a great efficiency for you if you don't uh, source and sell things in bulk, by which I mean, think like many of the same type of thing. Um, you know, a stack of vintage postcards or a stack of photographs or a stack of records or books or whatever it may be. If you're selling all one of a kind items, then it's going to be really fussy and you might as well just do it one at a time on eBay, probably. I mean, go through the thing and see if you think it will save you time. It might. I don't know. Um, at the moment, I only use this method for things where I have a lot of like items. And I also only use it for things where I have the same number of photos for each item. In the case of a postcard, we'll say two, though it could be three if you want to make um, cropped in uh, thumbnail images for your first image. That's cool too. But I'm just going to use two as an example, the sort of lowest common, 
common denominator of how you might list a postcard. This is also great for things like trading cards and books and sports cards and or maybe not books, I'm sorry. Books, you might want more than two photos. Um, but anything flat that has two sides and that's all you need to show, or one side, uh, you could do sheet music, you could do records, you could do photos, you could do um, any sort of paper ephemera that's just two sides and you don't need to show any details better than that. This is great. Um, it will make your life easier if it's the same number of photos per, but you could also work around that if you wanted to. So if you don't want to sit through this long granular tutorial, you want to just jump on board and try it, this is where you should go. On eBay, there is this page called Reports Uploads. And on this page, you can go to learning resources and I would download this thing, create listings in bulk, inventory onboarding guide, read this document. It's not too long, but it is very, it's a little oblique, we'll say. It's not exactly the most user-friendly thing ever. You, you might have to... You might have to go over it a little bit, <laughs> but read this and know that you're going to be working with this page to upload and download your files and go for it because you can figure it out if you want. If you want me to tell you all the things <laughs> and uh, tell you in my experience what is an easy way to do the things, um, keep watching. All right. <laughs> Next. So the basic process here is we're going to prep our images and then put them online, host them. We're going to build a template in a spreadsheet program. We're going to populate that template and we'll upload it to eBay and then we will troubleshoot if we need to. And that's basically how it goes. First thing that we're going to do is get our images ready and you're keying your listings to your images or in other words you need to make them correlate and that's something that I come back to through this process like you have to be organized about that or else you're gonna create yourself a very annoying headache. So in my world the first thing I do, and we're talking about postcards as an example, again, but you can use whatever you want or, you know, list some postcards just to get the hang of it, because I think that's a really easy one, and then extrapolate to whatever else you want to do. So what I do first is I sort my postcards. I sort them how I'm going to file them, which is this complicated system that you don't need to know about right now. but. I do that for my own ease. You don't need to do that, but it will help if you have more like things together. Not 100% necessary, but handy. Um, what you do want to do if you're doing postcards is take the eBay categories into consideration. And eBay has now um, winnowed down the categories for postcards to just topographical and non-topographical, which makes your life easier. So make sure you have your postcard sorted into those two piles. I'm going to do non-topographical postcards. If you have some of each, just keep them separate and we'll do them sort of serially. Like we'll start with one pile and then do the other pile, but it can all be in one file. It's fine. I just want to make it easier for you. In my process, my next step after I have them sorted is to scan them with a duplex scanner. I happen to use the Epson Fast Photo 680, and it's great, but there's lots of scanners that are cheaper and do just as well for this job. Um, there's the Epson DS series. Um, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but there's a whole mess of them, and they're all fabulous. I just like something that has a document feed so you can do a bunch at once and also does duplex automatically and has reasonable enough software that you can, you know, uh, set it how you want it. 
you could also take photos. You could also scan them on a flatbed. You could also scan them with your cell phone. Whatever you're going to do, it's all cool. Just get your images into a digital format and get them onto your computer. And when I say tidy, step three here, I just mean make sure they're all the right way up. They're exactly how you want them to appear on eBay. In you know, when you're listing one by one, Sometimes you'll flip an image in the eBay editor or make it a little whiter or whatever you need to do or do a crop in or something. But in this case, we're not going to be able to manipulate our images after a certain point. So you want to get them how you want them ahead of time. This may require using an image editor of some sort or your scanning software or um, a free tool online or whatever. If you have questions about that, just ask me, I'll figure out what thing you need because I know a lot of them. And um, if you want to do zoom ins or crop ins as your initial image for each one, now is the time to do that. I know it's probably different than your regular uh, workflow, but you will want to duplicate your image, create a cropped version, and then save that uh, and um, with the other front and back images of your postcard, for example. Step four, you're going to want all your images to be named in a systematic way. And this is very important. Um, these are mine. And I actually did this when I scanned them yesterday. And you should, if you're using a document scanner of some sort, be able to do the same thing where you create a prefix and it can be whatever you want it can be postcard it can be the date it can be you know dog <laughs> i don't know just create a prefix and a number personally i like to have an underscore between mine for the sake of simplicity um, and ease of seeing here so for example i use yesterday's date 14 January 22 underscore 0001 dot JPEG. Now I could have just started with one with no zeros. It doesn't really matter. I do use a long number with a lot of digits because sometimes I scan a lot of stuff and it's just tidier that way, but it doesn't really matter. So my scanner allows me to name files like this. I think all Epson software will do that. Probably, you know, Brother and all the other brands do it too. It's pretty standard. So as you're, since you've already put your things in the order you want them, as you're scanning, make sure they're named sequentially. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll not talk a lot about doing zoom-ins, but if you did want to, I'm not going to do it, but if you do, want to, you would name the file so that it falls before your first image for each one. They should sort in the order that you want them to actually live in real life. On the Mac, um, you would go here to clean up by name and it will sort them by their file name. I'm sure there's something similar on PC. Also on Mac, I'm looking at this icon view but you could also look at these as a list or some more conventional format. I just like to see <laughs> the images when I'm working with them like this. But anyway, so these are all in the order that I will eventually list them on eBay, keying them to my Excel template. And I know this sounds extremely boring, but it's actually really important. So you want to tidy your photos and rename them so they're exactly how they will be in the end. Now, if your scanner didn't name them or you already have your stuff already or you took photos or whatever and you can't um, use the automatic naming to do this, on Mac I can show you how to do it and on PC I looked it up and there's also a way to do it which you might have to Google if you don't know but you might know if you're a PC user. Um, you just select the ones that you want to rename in bulk. I mean, of course, you can go in and type the numbers if you want, but you can also do this, um, right click and do rename. 
and then you can fill in your prefix or under the format tab here and replace finder items you go to the format tab and you choose the name and index which is like a prefix and a number you choose you write your prefix in here like i would have written um 14 january 22 put an underscore here and then i would yeah i would just do one at this point i don't think i can do it with the leading zeros in this format doesn't matter like i said so i'd say start numbers at one and then it would rename them all like you see here the next step in the process is going to be setting up your hosting and i'm going to make that the next video so that you don't perish of boredom in the meantime but it will be coming soon all right i hope this was helpful so far just take it on faith that it's going to work and thank you and take care Thank you.